We either do another round of soccer or we eight, 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 eight. 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 Yeah, yeah it is boy. And some, oh. Sometimes oh. parents of girls are available. Oh. And, and it's on the 25th. Thursday, the 25th. It's really popular with all We're doing baseball here. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Oh. Five and seven. Oh. He babysits for, for a five and seven year old. Yeah, the Rick. Oh, we were just down, down the street. Yep. Please, please, please. Four and seven. Uh, no, it is Saturday. Saturday. Four, almost once a week. Which is good because it's just kind of. Oh, well, we're just down at yeah. Mitchell's. Not a lot of yeah. 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 Saturday. Yeah. Seth and, uh, is his name. He'll be 15 uh, in a couple months. So okay. Freshman in high school. Baseball will, be, baseball will definitely be. Yeah. That's oh, good. Right. Hello, John. What's he doing right now? Uh, he's he's babysitting uh, about a year and a half ago. Cape High School. I told Dan he needs an actor for that. Yeah, into a thing you now that's going to be available. But John's really eleven years yep. old. Another month. No, he just catches. Not that I know. He might be. Who knows? Yeah, he's a freshman in the high school and started babysitting for some neighbors. Yeah, he's a, a young boy. Whatever season. We don't mean it. Two moms, two right. parents who live who are right down the street from Sprint. We have a little boy, right Benjamin, and they yeah. wanted, you know, um, yeah. Katie and Celine. He started baby. Yeah, he started well, babysitting. I just, we used to live yeah, right on the corner, meal right on the corner of Shore and Cottage Farms. We sold it two years ago. Hasn't yet. He's looking at doing uh, one this year. Big colonial setback in the road. Uh, Face is Shore, but the driveway's on Cottage Farms, right on the corner. We live there for 14 years. And each started babysitting Katie and Celine because they wanted to. It's males, yeah. more males in, in Benjamin's life. Excellent. And yeah. we decided to have a babysitter. Yeah. Been out here at all? And then oh, yeah. there's a counselor at the beautiful. counselor in yeah. training nice. in Cape. Okay. Okay. Right. All right, well, let's talk about that. Let's get yeah. more babysitting. Really? All this to order? So, yeah, so keep them in mind. Yeah. Oh, it is. Seven, it's a great, great program to have. Oh, we on here? You probably do, but. Yeah, it's well run. Nine, two. They are. And his name is Seth. Cape is the philosophy. T-H, S-E-T-H. Calling the January 16th, 2007 meeting to order, please, of the Planning Board. Um, before anything else, I would like to welcome two new committee members. We're absolutely delighted to have you, Beth Richardson and Scott Collins. And Thank you. We hope you'll enjoy it and find it as big a learning experience as the rest of us have. And also, before we get into um, election of officers in and the minutes of the last meeting, I'd like to announce the Comprehensive Plan Committee is going to be having a public forum Thursday the 25th at 7 p.m. right here in this room. This is for anybody that might be listening tonight. We urge you to please come. We urge you to check the town website for the Comprehensive Plan and all the goals and implementation steps as well as being on the town website. The goals and implementation steps are available at the Thomas Memorial Library and at the town hall. So please, we urge you to come to the public forum, read these items, and then come and give us your opinion. We want to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much. All right, um, we have received in correspondence an email from R. Thompson regarding Shore Road, a letter from H. Smevag regarding Shore Road. And are there any corrections or additions to the minutes of the previous meeting of November 27th? I move to accept them then. Will we accept the minutes from the 27th? Second. Peter seconds. All in favor? Thank you. All right. Um, we're required to elect a chair and a vice chair to preside over <coughs> meetings for the next year. And I um, will now take um, a, a um, nominations. Nominations. <laughs> <laughs> this is a senior moment. Nominations, please, <laughs> for chairman. Jack. Uh, with great pleasure, I nominate Barbara Schenkel as chair for the coming year. Thank Second. Thank you. All in favor. Oh, any discussion? Touche, <laughs> 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 Barbara. Uh, all done, Barbara. <laughs> all in favor. Okay. And now nominations for vice chair. Paul? I'd like to nominate Peter Hatem as vice chair. Second. Second. Second, Jack. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. 
Right. Uh, first item on our agenda is the elder care zoning amendments. Maureen, do you want to go ahead and start? Sure. Just introduce. Um, what you have before you tonight is um, a memo dated January 16th, 2007. And attached to that memo is uh, a couple of things, are a couple of things. Uh, one is drafts of two text amendments. And then the third is some information you had requested on the number of lots in the RC district that are over five acres. Uh, just to review the, the density amendment, which I'm calling the density amendment, would increase the maximum allowable density of elder care um, facilities in the RC district only. Uh, what we're finding with the redevelopment of the Viking site is that the, the developer's goal for development of the site can't be met under the current zoning, and they've asked for an increase in the, in the density that's allowed. What's being proposed is to take the, the developers at this time suggesting that they would redevelop the site with 55 beds and 40 elder care apartments. So right now, the, a per bed that's allowed under the current density is 2,500 square feet per bed. The suggestion is to reduce that down to 2,100 square feet per bed, which is very close to the density that was allowed when the 1990s wing was originally approved. So that can be looked at as more of returning it back to what it was at an earlier date. Uh, but then the other piece of that is to find enough density to uh, allow 40 elder care apartments. And the elder care apartments are apartments that have a small kitchen and bathroom and either a studio or one or a two bedroom, but they are restricted to occupancy by elderly residents. Uh, and right now you need 3,500 square feet per elder care apartment and the proposal is to reduce the amount of square feet down to 2,500 square feet per elder care apartment. And it is our understanding that if those two things are reduced, that the applicant would be able to uh, meet their development goal of 55 beds and 40 elder care apartments. But there is another problem with the site or challenge with the site, and that is that since the 1990s wing was approved, the town has adopted more stringent wetland regulations that put almost the entire old wing that's about to be demolished into what we call the RP1 buffer, where we do not allow new construction. So that old wing is what we would call a non-conforming structure for wetland purposes. And the applicant could tear down the wing and rebuild within the existing footprint. They could also expand the footprint by up to 25 percent as long as they don't get any closer to the wetland. Um, but what they would like to do is actually tear down the old wing and build a new wing where the footprint would be smaller than the existing wing, but they would like to make it a two-story wing that would accommodate those 40 elder care apartments and would be more compatible with the two-story wing that they're proposing to maintain. Uh, what they have done um, at, at my request is to figure out exactly how much of an additional expansion they need because they need more than 25 percent, which is what we allow. And um, in terms of volume, they're, they're all right. In terms of uh, floor area, however, it looks like they, they may be expanding the whole building by up to 72 percent. So the proposed amendment is um, an amendment that would, if a building that is non-conforming as to wetlands, but more than 100 feet away from any wetland, from any RP1 wetland, if they would not expand their building footprint, they would be allowed to expand the floor area or volume by no more than 80 percent if the building is connected to the public sewer system and is not a single family home. The other limit would be that it would only be allowed for single story buildings. So that's the amendment that's, that's for your consideration tonight. And I believe <coughs> Mr. Hatem has uh, tightened up the language um, a bit and a copy of his proposal is, is on the podium before you tonight. And I just wanted to go for a moment and look at the map right here, which you have it. It's in black and white. Mine, of course, is in color. Um, but what we did is we did a search of all the building, all the lots that are either completely or partially within the RC district, 
and then those lots that are um, five or more acres over in size. And so those colored areas are, are the lots that are five or more acres in size and could potentially um, be affected by this amendment. Some of those lots, I'd say approximately five of those lots, uh, you could probably eliminate from the discussion because they're either already under conservation restrictions or are already severely limited by the presence of wetlands on the site. Uh, the other thing is if you look at that last page, um, the last column is the building assessment. Where you see a building assessment is where you know that there actually is a structure on that property and where there's no building assessment is where you know that the property is vacant. Um, I should point out, for example, that two of those properties are what now comprise the Spurwink Woods project. So is there any questions? Maureen, could you identify those five lots, please? Mm. Um, if I'm going down the list that's on the back page, the Cottage Farms Associates lot is, um, I believe that's a condominium. So I guess you could tear down the condominium building and do something with it, but it's pretty much fully developed right now. Um, Tom Board, the Tom Bordeaux lot is severely encumbered by wetlands. Uh, the Hacienda LLC is also a Tom Bordeaux lot, so the two lots actually function together. Um, again, severely encumbered by wetlands. Um, Jane Hanley, um, getting down to the middle there, is, is Spurwink Woods. Um, Jane McFarland is Spurwink Woods. Um, Van Longkaisen is, is actually a perfectly nice lot on Shore Road. Um, Stephen Bothell is a lot that has been before the board as a master plan lot that hasn't come forward for formal approval and that's on Route 77. Uh, Sheila Alexander is the horse farm on Mitchell Road right near Meadowview Lane and across from Stonegate. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tom Jones, that lot is severely constrained by wetlands. Um, the Perputa Club obviously is the Perputa Club. And then um, the, the Brentwood West Association, that's the open space owned by the Brentford neighborhood. Town of Cape Elizabeth on Six Sky Dyer Road. And then the healthcare properties, I believe, is uh, that's the uh, Village Crossings property. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any questions or items for that we want to discuss right now? A moment to digest and, uh, this, Peter. Um, I just want to focus on single story, Maureen, just so the, the existing, the plan for this project is the, the 90s building is, first of all, that is a single story building by the definition. The 90s building is a two-story building. Mm -hmm. The older wing, I, I think it was built in the 70s. I honestly haven't checked. The 70s wing is a one-story building. And I did talk to the code officer about that wording. I also forwarded him the wording of the proposed text and wanted to make sure he was comfortable with the term one-story. And he sure. felt that he, was, he could work with that, that he would have building code definitions that would support the concept. Okay. Also, it's my understanding the 55 Assisted living units are already in place, so that is not any addition in terms of the number of units that are there now. Is that correct? Well, there were 55 beds in there before the building was vacated. The assisted living room was vacated too? The whole, the whole building is vacant right now. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, but that, just so the public knows, that's part of it that's not being proposed to be changed in any way at all. Right. What the applicant has told us is that they might make some minor renovations in there, but it really doesn't need any work. Okay. Other questions? Or? I know we talked about, we've got this 80% down here, and that's, um, we don't want to say it's 100% expansion, so somebody can't put a full second floor on. But the 80% also is high enough where the developer can do what he wants. Is that a good, I mean, that was just kind of a quick number we came up with. Does that present any pro problems for future? I don't, I'm just the unintended consequences. I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know. Um, it doesn't bother me, but I just wanted to bring it up and make sure we're all okay with it. I think at the, at the workshop we had talked about um, 
the whole idea that typically when you're looking at wetland impacts, you're more concerned with building footprint coverage. Right, and it's going down with volume coverage. In this case. And uh, in Cape Elizabeth, we actually we're very concerned about f volume coverage because in square footage, because the concern is that as a building gets bigger, regardless of what's going on inside, there's going to be more sanitary waste flows, right. and in most cases, the sanitary waste flows is going into a septic system. Right. It's usually just upgrading of the nearby wetland. Right. Um, and in this case, you're actually um, tying the opportunity for a greater expansion to public sewer, uh, which might actually have beneficial impact on the wetland even though you're yeah. increasing the square footage yeah. but you're right this I mean this this amendment definitely could uh, be applicable to other projects yeah. I believe it wasn't a hundred percent which would allow any one-story right. building to double in size because the planning board had asked at the workshop to try to keep that as low as possible right okay and also you know Peter you're your suggested change I like. Um, I do want to make a grammatical change so it could not be misconstrued in the future. Let me run this by and see what you think. It's where your correction starts. You say, however, a single story building that is A, not a single family home, and B, connected to public sewer. I'd like to change the way you say that so it couldn't be misinterpreted. I'd say, however, a single story building that is connected to public sewer and is not a single family home. Just so you don't, somebody say you, you can't be on a sewer too, and then, see what I'm saying? So I'd like to just change that around so <coughs> we know what we meant, but somebody down the road may not. Maureen, could I ask a question about the um, increase in, the increase in volume or floor area? This applicant is looking toward adding a, is, or is looking at adding a second floor. Is there anything that prevents future applicants from using this amendment to add a third or a fourth floor or a large tower that still adds up to 80 percent? Um, there are other restrictions. Mm -hmm. in, in no matter what district you're in, you have a height limit of 35 feet. Right. So that would be one cap. Uh, and then the other ones are the ones we're adding in here, which basically, which says, that you have to be on public sewer. Right. Most of the town, it really is not served by public sewer. So that's probably the biggest limit. And then excluding single family homes, um, there's just not a lot of non residential buildings left in town at that point. True. But I mean, I'm not going to promise you this is the only one. I'm sure as soon as it's adopted, there'll be another mm -hmm. one. But there's no question that the height limit. The height so. limit is an absolute. No matter where you are in town, the height limit is 35 feet. Right. Thank you. And can you get a variance for that? No. no. Also, I believe that it says in here clearly a single story building. That and if it's two stories, you can't add right. a third story on. It had to be. And, right. No, that I, that I realize. It's not adding the third story on. It's the, if you, what I, and the height limit answers my question. But what I was concerned with is that you could build a tower that's, you know, five stories high, um, stays within the 80% increase. And is still added on to a single story building. But if the height the height limitation is absolute, then that's not an issue. And and let me correct the answer. Uh, I, you said can you get a variance from the height limit? And I said no. And technically you can ask for a variance from the height limit, but I can't imagine a situation where you would be able to meet the variance standards. Uh, you, you'd need to show that you had no viable use of your property and you know you've already gotten two and a half stories to get up to past thirty five feet. Uh, I, I'm having a hard time imagining a situation where you'd be able to go past it. Okay. You know, maybe I did read this incorrectly in that I, w I, am, I was reading it that they could not add more than one story. It has, to, be, say that, it has to start as a single family, a single, a single story, story building. Right. right. <clears throat> if, you, if you start with a two story building, this, you can't do it. No, I understand that. But, but going to Beth's question, uh, if you started with a single story building, I was assuming you could only add one story. But in reality, you could add up to two more stories yeah. the so way be, this be is now. So I guess I'd be under the 35 feet. Well, and you also you have to be on public sewer, and you're still just. No. Only to 80%. No, that's, I, I mean, and you're not expanding the building footprint. So I, I guess I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that too because we're not expanding the building footprint. Right. We may be right. 
reducing it even more if we only added if we added two stories instead of one and still were within 35 feet. Okay, more discussion. Clarification, if I can, on the um, where was it? Twenty-five hundred square feet per unit is that an average, or is that at, at an absolute value for for any unit? You, what you do is you come up with you, you find the total amount of land you own. Yes. You subtract out of that fifteen percent for roads. Yep. Subtract out any um, RP1 wetlands, any floodplain, any easements, yep. um, any isolated portions of the site and you come up with something called net residential acreage. Right. And then from your net residential acreage, you take the number of beds you want, multiply <clears throat> it by 2,500, and that's how much land area that goes into your beds. Since I'm always looking to do more than what we intend to do, is there any reason why would we want to also modify the rooming or boarding home definition as well, or is that something that is... Because if we're looking to lower the density, I'm sorry, increase the density? It is something, you, uh, there, you're not limited in what you recommend. Right. You, you, could, you could go at that. You, you also, however, and I understand how it's, it's moving in that direction, mm -hmm. um, you may also want to keep that idea and wait until the planning board is working on a package of zoning amendments that will probably issue out of the comprehensive plan. Okay. Because this, this still goes on to the council, Maureen, is that right? Oh, yes. So, I mean, if we have some other ideas between now and proposed, the proposal to the council, we could send an email or, or sure. make some suggestions. And, and you are advisory to the council, so. Right. Yeah. This isn't a done deal, even if we recommend it tonight. Right. Well, actually, we, we don't even recommend it tonight. We would just say that the... The text we think is acceptable at this point and schedule a public hearing oh, yeah. for the next mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. we have that layer and then the right. council layer and it's we a have long one more process. Hearing here before we have a hearing here and then they have to have a hearing at the council too. Other comments or questions or observations or changes or no, I'm not sure we don't vote on this, do we? We're just you, yeah, there is a potential. You have option. to move to table this, is Yes, so. we have table it. And it's schedule. Right. Page three. Oh, that's right. Put it. All right. If nobody has anything else, does anybody want? I, I certainly liked both Peter's rewrite, and I believe it was Jim. Jim's addition. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I read that? It's I mean, I made the changes, Jim. I just want to make sure. Yes. Would you please down. read it? And then I can Peter. send it via email it says the sentence would read however a single story building that open paren a close paren is connected to public sewer and open paren b close paren is not a single family home may increase its volume or floor area once comma by no more than 80 percent of its pre-expansion volume or floor area comma so long as there is no expansion, expansion of its existing building footprint, period. Do we need the A and the B? I mean, just to simplify things, does that make it any more I did accurate? it just so that it was, I, I'm always in favor of sort of adding those, so it's a clear, it's a two-part and test. You've got to do this, connect it to public sewer, okay. and it has right. to be this, not a single family home. Okay. Is that engineer in me just trying to simplify things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they teach us to do this in law school. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, is everybody happy with that wording? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anybody have any other corrections or additions? Okay, we have a motion to entertain. So I move we table the draft. Uh, oh, but go ahead. Until, and the data saves me, I don't have it, the next. Page three. So, looking at it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Based on a draft text, the planning board tables, uh, oh, we table the elder care wetland zoning amendment to the February 26 meeting uh, so we can have a public hearing. I'll second that. Discussion? 
All those in favor? Okay. We invite any members of the public to please come to the public hearing and say whatever you might have to say. And the text of the amendment will be posted on the website. Thank you. So you'll be able to see it there. All right. Any other items for consideration? Well, we're we're not having a public hearing tonight. It won't be till next time. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, please call Maureen if you have any questions. Call Maureen if you have any questions. She'll answer you tomorrow, okay? But we just, our procedure is fairly rigid as far as uh, public hearings are concerned. Thank you. Please call Maureen about it. Or send an email and send it back. <clears throat> Anybody have anything else? Right, move to adjourn then. So move. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. You used to have lights on.